Hey everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So lots of you guys asked me about a tutorial on how to add mobile controls to this FPS micro game project. You could create this project using Unity Hub and it's free. But the only problem that it doesn't come with mobile controls and that's what we're gonna implement. We will have these two joysticks to move the player and rotate the camera. So this project comes with enemies like this one and we can shoot using this button. Of course, you could build this game on mobile devices like Android or iOS. And without any further ado, let's dive right into it. So first of all, let's create the project using Unity Hub. You could go to projects. Then let's hit new project and it is part of the templates. You could get it from here. It is called FPS micro game or you could go under learning and it is the first project. For the first time, you have to download it using a download button. I've already done that. After that, we can give it a name like mobile FPS. And let's hit create project after selecting the location. And once it's done, you will see this interface. So you could load the tutorials and learn more about this project. But I will skip that. I'm gonna work on this main scene. As you can see, we have this FPS shooter game. I can move using the AWSD keys. Also, we can shoot with the left mouse button. To add mobile controls to this project, you have to download this folder from the link under the video description. It is called mobile controls. I'm gonna hit download and it is downloaded as a zip file. Then let's right click and extract all and put it on my desktop. Then let's hit extract and we can import it into Unity by dragging the mobile controls under the assets folder. And here you have two options under prefabs, canvas. The first one uses joysticks to move the player as well as the camera. And the other version allows you to move the player by dragging your finger under this area. And you could apply the same process for both of these. I'm gonna select this one. I want to use the joysticks. Also, we have this one to jump, sprint. I'm gonna show you how to add a third one so that we can shoot. And to do that, we need to understand how the player moves. For now, it is using the uh, standalone inputs, which means the keyboard to move the player. Let's open up the script that is responsible for that, which is attached to the player object. And it is the player character controller. Let's open it up by double clicking on it. I'm not going to explain all of these lines of code. Basically, they have added this object of type player input handler that handles the input. For example, we can check if we have pressed the left mouse button to shoot. All of this logic is under this script that we're gonna open up. Here we have this function, get crouch input down to check whether we have pressed the C key, I guess, to crouch. Under this function, they are handling the character movement to move the player using the AWSD keys or the mouse to look around. So we need to focus on this script. Let's open it up. It is attached to the player. And here it is, player input handler. And we are going to modify these functions to get the move input. For now, they are using input.getAccessRow, which is the old input system using the AWSD keys. We are going to recreate this vector by reading the inputs from the joystick. But before that, you need to understand how these controls work. Basically, we have this canvas that contains the joysticks as well as the buttons. Before that, we need to fix these warnings. Let's double click on it. Recently, we have used this script to control our player by accessing the player inputs manager script. But in this project, we need to access the player input handler. To fix that, we can change the type to player input handler. Now, each time we move the joystick, this function will be called and it takes in the virtual move direction that changes continuously whenever we move the joystick in all of the directions. We are going to use this vector to move our FPS controller from this script. For that, we need to create this vector under the player input handler. So let's go on top and I'm gonna make it public so that we can access it from the UI canvas controller. The type is vector2 and I'm gonna call it move. Now, each time we use the joystick, this function will be called and it's going to access the move vector from this script and change it to the virtual move direction that changes as long as we move the joystick in all of the directions. And the rest is simple. We are going to use the X value to move the player left and right and the Y value of this vector to move it forward and backward. We are going to adjust this function get move input. 
I want to keep the controls from the keyboard. For that, I will create a boolean using public so that we can access it from other scripts. The type is boolean. I'm gonna call it mobile enabled. Then we can add an if statement. We can check if the mobile controls are enabled. In such case, we are going to return a new vector3. For the x, I'm gonna use move.x and this is the move vector that we have created on top. But that will give us an error because we have two variables with the same name. I'm gonna call this one move axis. The same thing, let's change this one to move axis and it is returned. And let's get back here. For the y, I'm gonna use zero. And for the z value, I'm gonna use move.y. The same thing applies for the other functions like this one, get look input horizontal that returns the mouse x movement whenever we move the mouse left and right. Instead, we are going to use the second joystick. And there is this function that is under the UI canvas controller. This one is called automatically each time we use the second joystick. In such case, we will use its variation and rotate the player accordingly using another vector that is called look. So we have to create it under the player input handler. And let's add another if statement so that we can check if we have mobile controls enabled. In such case, we need to return the x variation and it is stored under look dot x. And let's copy these lines of code to save a little bit of time and paste it under the second function, get look inputs vertical. We need to return the look dot y value. And let's stick with that for now so that we can test it. But first I have to comment these lines of code. So I have made a little mistake. The V is uppercase. We have the second error because this script is created under a namespace, unity.fps.gameplay, we need to include it under the UI canvas controller so that we can add a reference to the player input handler script. Let's go on top and use the namespace, unity.fps.gameplay. I'm gonna copy it and paste it. And there you go, we didn't have errors. Now this canvas needs a reference to the player input handler script. For that, we need to drag and drop the player and let's give it a try by hitting play. I can't test the joysticks because each time I try to move it, the mouse cursor is hidden. We need to search for the script that is responsible for that. If you build this game for mobile, you are not going to face this problem. But to test it in our editor, we need to disable this functionality. And it is under the in-game menu manager. Let's open it up. Whenever we press the left mouse button, we have these lines of code that are activated which changes the cursor lock state to locked and that hides the cursor. You could remove these lines of code for now or we can add another end. We are going to check if mobile controls is not enabled. In such case, we have to lock the mouse cursor. Otherwise, we don't need that. They have already added a reference to the player input handler. I'm gonna copy the name. Then we can access the boolean that we have created, which is called mobile enabled. If it's not enabled, we are going to lock the mouse cursor and hide it. And let's select the player. We need to enable this option, mobile enabled, so that we can use the mobile controls. The camera rotates when I use this joystick, but we need to adjust its sensitivity from the inspector. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And whenever we move this joystick, nothing happens. You see that the mouse X and Y values are changed, but the character is not moving. Here on top, we have another if statement, can process input. So this function is checking if the lock state equals locked. In our case, the mouse cursor is not locked. That's why it returns false and we will not be able to move the character. So I will cut these lines of code and put them outside of this if statement. Now I'm gonna show you how to adjust the sensitivity. You simply have to select the joystick look, which is this one and we have this magnitude multiplier. I'm gonna reduce it to 0 0.005, which is the sensitivity of the camera movement. And let's try to move around. And there you go, it is working. As I said, you could adjust the sensitivity of both of these. And let's finish up by adding the other functionalities like jumping, sprinting, and most importantly, the shoot button. If you select the jump button, you see that we have this button state output event and it is something that raises or triggered each time we press the button. 
in this case it is calling the function virtual jump input under the UI canvas controller in such case we are going to change a boolean under the player input handler so that we can move our player using the buttons for that I need to uncomment these lines of code so this script is used for our third person controller in which we have created a button to change the mode of the player you don't need that, I'm gonna get rid of it and we need to add the booleans and let's go all the way down to check for the function that is responsible for jumping it is this one I'm gonna add the same if statement in such case we will return our new boolean jump I'm gonna copy these lines of code because we have two functions that are responsible for jumping the second one is called get jump input held let's paste it the next ones are responsible for shooting we haven't added that yet but we have created this print boolean in this case we will return it and it is called sprint now let's save the script and there you go we can jump using this button for now I can't test the sprint you have to build the game on a mobile device so that you can use these two at the same time let me show you how to add another button to shoot for that you can duplicate this one using ctrl D and let's rename it to virtual button shoot then I'm gonna move it to the side by changing the pose X and pose Y also I want to change the icon by selecting the image icon for now I will use this one for shooting and here we have to select a different function which will be called each time we press the shoot button for that we need to get back to the UI canvas controller input and let's use ctrl C and ctrl V then I will call it virtual fire input and it takes a boolean let's change the name as well virtual fire state and assign it to our boolean that we're gonna create I'm gonna call it shoot equals the virtual fire state then let's create it under the player input handler and use it for shooting under these functions I will return our new boolean shoot of course we need to check if we have mobile controls enabled in such case we will return our new boolean shoot and do the same thing under these functions get fire input held and input release finally we can select the shoot button and we are going to change the function that is called each time we press it in this case we are going to call the UI canvas controller input and the function virtual fire input you could also adjust the position of these UI elements like this joystick I'm gonna change the size to 250 or maybe 300 is fine and let's move it a little bit to the top and I want to move the other ones and now we can shoot using this button so it is working I think that's pretty much it guys for this video I hope you like it if you have any question or comment make sure to write it under the comment section down below and I will see you in the next one